two young ladies. These girls, in fact, had lost their way. Then Aaron asks, may I assist you to some extent? Aaron quickly moves to those gals after saying this. Aaron guides them in the proper direction while also assisting them. Then he embarks on a journey with them, guiding them. When they cross a big distance, Aaron tells them, I also know the opposite direction of the path. And I can assure you that you will have a great time on this journey. They are now making their way down the mountain. These walkways are also quite narrow. When they are all three ahead of them, Aaron leaps from there. Seeing this, those girls are terrified, believing Aaron has fallen. But Aaron summons them from the other side right away. There was a lot of water, in fact. It was a swimming pool. Aaron now requests that they both jump down. Then one by one, these two gals hump into the water. They have a lot of fun doing so. There is a lot of joy there. After that, they all continue on their journey. After exiting the location, Aaron needed to proceed onward for hiking. And both of the girls must relocate to their new home. So, before parting, they take a selfie here. Aaron inquires, will we have another chance to meet? Between them, one of the girls exclaims, there's our party tomorrow night. You are welcome to go there as well. Later, Aaron walks away and bids them farewell. Aaron is presently making his way through the mountainous terrain. He's ecstatic, and he can't get enough of this hiking. However, the routes in these locations are extremely small and dangerous. When Aaron descends from the two narrow mountains, he comes across a large rock, which he uses for support. That rock is slipping at the same time. The wretched Aaron then begins to crumble. While rolling down, the rock through which Aaron had taken support also fell on his right hand of Aaron. Aaron's hand is now stuck between two small mountain paths beneath a boulder. He, on the other hand, had not sustained much hurt. But he couldn't get his hand out of that spot. He tries everything he can to get his hand out of there, but it's in vain. When Aaron realizes he can't get his hand out of this situation, he begins yelling for help from both girls. Unfortunately, his voice was unable to be heard outside of that location. Because this is a mountainous region, it was remarkable to hear the voice echo from here, where no human, animal, or even a bird's presence could be discerned at a distance. After that, Aaron opens his bag and takes everything out of it, including all of his hiking equipment. He'll get out of here no matter what it takes. Because he knew no one would be able to come here for several months. He also has a knife among the items he has taken out of the bag. Then, using that knife, he tries to break the rock on one side. But this rock was incredibly sturdy. It's as solid as a rock and has no effect. His right hand was also trapped there. As a result, he was having trouble acting with his left hand. Despite this, Aaron maintains his courage. And he's always attempting to break that rock. Meanwhile, his knife slips from his grip and falls to the ground. He can no longer catch the knife in his hand. Since he can't see the knife because it's so far away, but in some manner, he intelligently drags this knife towards him. And he starts cutting the rock again, but it's useless. That rock was so solid that the knife's sharpness had totally worn out. The knight has fallen at first sight. Aaron had been stranded here for several hours. He couldn't figure out how he was going to get out of this. As a result, he continues to strive to release his hand. As a result, the next morning arrives as well. It had been 25 hours since Aaron had been caught here. He couldn't seem to find a way out of this situation. Then he switches on his camera and begins filming. In which he notes that I've been stuck here for the past 25 hours. And no one is aware that I am present. Because I did not notify anyone prior to my arrival. I also had a scarcity of edibles as a result of this. And there's just 400 to 500 milliliters of water to drink. When he is filming this, he hears a voice from the side. As a result, Aaron begins to yell for assistance. But his yelling is ineffective. There isn't anyone because there isn't anyone. After a few hours, night falls there once more. And Aaron starts to feel peckish. And he begins to eat the remaining edible stuff that Aaron has. Then he reminds me that those girls had invited me to supper tonight. There will, without a doubt, 
be wine. Then Aaron starts imagining the party. In addition, he delivers the monologue. He also recalls the day when he was leaving his house for hiking on Saturday. His mother's phone is also buzzing in his ear. He, on the other hand, does not pick up her call and keeps it a secret that he is going trekking. If Aaron had informed her, she might come here while looking for him. Nobody knows where Aaron is now. Aaron makes a little wheel with strings on the third day, Monday. With the help of the ropes, he ties that rock. A pebble had landed on his hand. And he tries to pull the rock by using the rope's opposite edge. Despite his efforts, the rock does not move from its position. Later, he tries to move the rock while entangling his feet on the rope's edge. However, at this time, this endeavor is likewise futile. Because three days had elapsed, the problem was getting worse. His water supply had also run out. He now has free time here because he has nothing to do, so he was noticing the small details. As if you were a bird flying across the sky. He is unable to move from this position. Insects that are dangerous to humans continue to visit the area. If he wants to eat the insects after they've been killed. After that, he'll have to wait for them to arrive. In this mountainous locale, Aaron barely gets 15 minutes of sun. Because the sun sets later, the light is no longer present. Because of the appetite and hunger in this setting, Aaron had become agitated. As a result, he chooses to dismember his hand right now. As a result, he binds his forearm tightly. And he uses the knife he carries to dismember his arm. However, the knife's sharpness had worn off. As a result, the knife couldn't cut through the thin layer of his flesh. As a result of his disappointment, Aaron recorded in his camera, never buy cheap tools. Because they are ineffective. Another day has passed in this manner. As the night falls, Aaron reflects on his past. He misses his family, closest friends, and numerous other acquaintances. When he is missing them, the sky becomes gloomy. A strong downpour begins at first sight. Because Aaron's water supply had run out. As a result, he begins to fill his water bottle with rainwater. The water has also started to flow between those limited mountain slopes. The location of Aaron's entrapment. With initial glance, the water's surface was increasing. As a result, Aaron starts to drown in it. As the liquid water becomes denser, the objects begin to float. As a result, Aaron tries to lift the rock while advancing into the sea. And, after much difficulty, he manages to lift the rock. As a result, his hand is immediately freed from the rock. Then Aaron dashes to his car as he exits that location. He gets into his car and drives away. But that was only a dream for him. Because it isn't the case. He was stranded in the mountainous region. Now he starts shouting loudly once more. Because he had been trapped for several days, he began to have hallucinations. Aaron had been ensnared here for four days. It's now his fifth day. As a result, his behavior and attitude have been significantly affected. He engages in one-sided conversation and comments, chuckles, and adds, if I had received a call from my mother that day or notified him that I was coming here, I might not have ended up here. I didn't tell him anything about the shop where I got the hiking necessities. If he was aware of this, he might file a missing person report. As a result, anyone can come here to look for him. Aaron, he tells his parents, I have a lot of feelings for you. Actually, Aaron is filming everything because his hopes of being rescued from this location have been dashed. Because he is thirsty, hungry, and physically weak. And Aaron had been imprisoned here by this massive and immovable rock. For the third time, Aaron knots his hand. He does not seek to dismember his hand with a knife whose sharpness has been completely lost. However, he begins stabbing his hand with the knife's front side. He stabs the knife so deeply into his hand that it becomes lodged in the bone of his hand. His hand begins to bleed as a result of this. However, Aaron does not go any further. Another day has passed in this manner. When the sixth day approaches, Aaron's condition worsens. He was suffering from exhaustion. If he does not get out of here, he will die. Aaron believes the same thing, as if this rock has been waiting for me my entire life. Since the day I was born, 
This mountain trail has been waiting for me. It could be my final destination. Rest in peace, he writes on that rock. He also mentions his name and the year he was born. Because he was certain he wouldn't be able to escape alive from here. With this, he had lost all bravery. He was also completely spent. When he regains his little consciousness the next day, he begins to imagine something. Then he sees a little infant in his peripheral vision. Who will be Aaron's future son? He imagines himself playing with his son and becomes sentimental as a result. As a result, he gains power. As a result, he begins to thrust his entrapped hand to the opposite side. He breaks the bone in his hand in the process. He has also honed the knife he owns. And he starts slowly dismembering his hand. He separates his hand from his body in this manner. After cutting his hand on the sixth day, he is able to remove himself from the rock. Before leaving this location, he also takes a photo of his hand. That hand, which is still entrapped in the rock. Aaron is now struggling to get out of this mountainous terrain. And as he emerges from that location, he discovers that the raining water is still present. Then Aaron starts drinking a lot of water and walks there. He hadn't eaten or drank anything for the previous six days. As a result, he satisfies his thirst today. He then continues on his way. He also sees the bird flying through the sky, which he used to see every day from the top of the mountain. And, like that bird, he considered himself free. However, getting out of that region was still difficult, because the area was so vast and desolate. But Aaron hasn't given up hope yet. Despite the fact that he is in excruciating pain, he begins to walk forward. Then he notices a family who had come here to go trekking. Then Aaron summons them, and they dash over to him. They request Aaron's assistance from security, and a chopper arrives. The chopper then transports Aaron to the hospital. Then, every now and then, a scenario is shown in which Aaron has been perfectly recovered. Aaron's imagined images of his child become a reality as well. Because after three years, Aaron meets a girl. And they're both married. After that, Aaron's child is born, and he looks just like the child that Aaron had visualized. During these six days, Aaron peers into the eyes of death. Despite this, Aaron continues to be enthusiastic. He still hikes up the mountain and climbs up the mountain. He must then compose a story about his travels and the sites he has visited. Let's unveil the stunning truth right now. The plot of this novel is based on true events. It implies that Aaron was indeed caught in those mountain routes for six days. He didn't spend much time there. He had also carved his birth and death dates on the rocks of that location. Because he was certain he would never be able to leave this place alive. The rock that Aaron's hand was crushed against weighed 360 kilograms. There was a scarcity of both edibles and water. But it was a positive feature of his that he did not lose his courage. This was the only reason he was able to survive for five days. On the sixth day, when he was certain he would not live, he was assisted by a supernatural power in which he saw his future son. He gained bravery as a result of this, and he was eventually able to leave that location. Aaron also stated in an interview that if he dismembered his hand previously, his blood would have been squandered and he would not be able to get out of this situation. He could also die there if he did not